go ahead and give a brief overview of DFIRM and I guess like what, what makes you guys different compared to other uh, rebasing projects and what gives you that competitive edge? Absolutely. So first and foremost, just to introduce myself, my name is Archibald. I'm the founder and the dev here at DFIRM Finance. We're in auto staking protocol on the Avalanche network that accumulates real estate, the first of our kind doing it in our way. And I'm joined here by my partner, Lori. Oh, hi guys. Uh, my name's Lori. I'm the head of the real estate uh, board at DFIRM. I'm uh, super excited to be here today. It's my second official AMA. So I'm excited for the process. Awesome. Thank you, Lori. And you had mentioned there, you said, um, what, what sets us apart from other protocols or maybe other rebasing protocols? I love getting that question. I love that question because a lot of rebasing protocols, the whole premise of what they do is to provide passive income <coughs> for their holders and um, perhaps you know some long-term value as an investment uh, with their underlying investment. So what happens, um, as I'm sure we've all seen with many rebasing protocols, is um, after a certain amount of time, it basically collapses due to inflation and also due to investors really not having any real purpose to stay long term. And that would be um, for a lack of utility because there's always new rebasing protocols coming out um, basically every single day. And they all essentially do the same thing. And if there isn't any underlying utility to drive holders to hold long term, it's basically destined um, destined to have the same outcome as basically um, the majority of even the big rebasing protocols have had, which is basically collapsing and inflation inflation spiraling out of control. So where we come in and what changes things with us is that we're actually building a decentralized um, real estate portfolio, a, a community governed real estate portfolio that gives investors of all sizes the chance to invest into real estate and using some of these mechanisms that are found in rebasing protocols such as buy and sell taxes and different revenue streams we're able to rotate uh, those funds into real estate that all of our investors have an opportunity to buy into in the form of nfts and receive more passive rewards and then we also have our DFIRM token um, which represents the DeFi side of things where you can um you know get that passive income and the 10k apy but the difference is um we're, we have sustainability in mind and we have a maximum supply in mind. So eventually those rebases um, will come to an end. It's not going to last forever. And once again, this is for sustainability. And you see these six figure APYs, um, us coming in at a 10K APY as we um, roll out our utilities, um, you know, which, which um, shows our long term value um, is sustained through once again our our uh, revenue structures, buy and sell taxes, quantum liquidity, which, which we add, um, plan on adding in as well, and um, the NFT royalties. So this is able to sustain our APY as we roll out our utilities and really start to display the long term value that DFIRM Finance brings to the table, which is a uh, merging real estate and cryptocurrency. So that's how I could really wrap it up um, in one in in not one sentence, but in one statement, how uh, DFIRM differs from other rebasing protocols. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah. Well said. I, I like the I love the aspect of real estate because you know it's a super high barrier to entry asset class and it's not very liquid. Exactly. But then fractionalizing it into NFTs makes it accessible to way more people and it's way more liquid like if i wanted to sell my real estate nft tomorrow i could probably do that assuming there's a buyer of course but it exactly. makes it way easier than going through the month-long process of signing a bunch yeah. of paperwork and finding a seller yeah. or buyer and it exactly and i'm glad you mentioned that um because one thing that our protocol is going to feature because we're doing the nft sales after already purchasing the houses we're able to actually have an otc mechanism where you don't actually need a buyer to get the market value of um your fractionalized real estate share out of the market you can actually sell it back to the protocol and get um get market value back 
um, basically sell it back to the protocol if there isn't a uh, buyer on the open market. So by by having it as NFTs, that opens up a opportunity for these NFTs to be traded at a premium. So let's say you were a minter, there is a chance that somebody's willing to buy it above market price on the open on the open market. Let's say on OpenSea or something like that, and um, that that gives upside for um, the both the investor and the protocol um, because they can always rest assured that they'll get market value back at least or a premium on the open market. So I'm glad that you mentioned that as well because you don't actually always need for there to be a buyer for you to be able to sell um, your fractionalized share, which is another um, pretty pretty big feature that we're introducing that hasn't really been available before. Yeah, that's super awesome. I didn't know you guys were doing that. I don't think we talked about that before. So no. that's news to me. That sounds awesome, man. Thank you, absolutely. Yeah, so how exactly will this uh, revenue from these rental properties translate into on-chain revenue from or to the holders of the DFIRM token or the NFTs? Like, how exactly does that look? Yes, yeah, so I'm glad you mentioned that. Early on, there isn't going to be direct correlation from the real estate revenue to investors just on the fact that we don't want to classify as a security. There's a big um, SEC uh, regulation risk there. If investors were to be direct beneficiaries of the properties that we hold under our um, under the DFIRM LLC, um, then we would be considered a security. And each investor would have to be what you call accredited investors, meaning they have a net worth of over a million dollars or um, or earn over $200,000 annually uh, proven. And it's a whole long process with a bunch of paperwork. And that's not the spirit of uh, DeFi or what we're trying to do at all. So early on, um, holders of our NFT are going to be paid um, rewards in DFIRM token. And they're going to still be able to sell their the underlying asset, um, as we mentioned, on the open market. Um, as we scale and scale the real estate operation up as well, um, another point to that is that um, the returns from real estate, of course, are a lot slower um, than, let's say, cryptocurrency, um, even in, like, like, let's say, farming and staking. So until the real estate portfolio is really scaled up, it wouldn't even really make sense for it to directly be flowing directly back into investors rather than the protocol or rather than to scaling the real estate operation. So holders will be receiving different tokens in a different structure. Gotcha. Yeah, that's very well thought out. I think that is definitely taken in consideration all the legalities around real estate yeah. and securities. Like It gets really complicated really fast. So Absolutely, uh, it does. And uh, yeah, it's an important thing to stay on top of. So Definitely. A lot of projects that we hear from they're like, what? What's what's regulations? What? I've never yeah. never looked into that before. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, oh man, that yeah. can't end well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's important. Um, we've actually seen um, a, a project in the past. We're not going to drop any names. Who kind of tried to embark on this mission in a completely different way. It was a fork of a different, um, popular passive income protocol. Um, but. Um, exactly. They ran into issues with regulations and wasn't really able to deliver. And so we've done our homework at the time and we've watched from uh, basically the 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 trial, the trial and the trial and, and uh, fail from other projects in the past. And we make sure uh, we're on top of everything um, when it comes to regulations and legalities. Definitely. I like it. Another question is uh, how how are you going to market? real estate in a DeFi world because uh, I think that a lot of people in the DeFi space would look at real estate and be like oh that's only 10 20 percent a year like that's pathetic why would I do that when I can just go to Olympus Dow and get 10,000 <laughs> percent APY like a lot of people don't understand the difference there and yes. I guess what's your plan to help people understand the difference and then market it to everybody Absolutely. So I'm really glad you asked, asked that one again. So basically, DFIRM Finance, we actually aim to appeal to both of these styles of investors, the ones looking for, you know, the high risk, high reward, um, high APY type of play. And that's where the DFIRM token comes in. That's really representative of our the spirit of DeFi in DFIRM because our slogan is DeFi meets real estate. And then we have our real estate side of things, um, which is on the NFT 
side of things, and that represents the more stable, long-term investment holding, uh, which real estate is at the end of the day, right? And so you don't have to really worry about the volatility and price fluctuations too much because the value of each NFT is pegged to the price of each property um, on currently on the open market. Um, and so that that is really the premise of, of D firm. So it really gives it really caters to both styles of investors. Um, we're bringing in a, a novel, a novel feature and a novel utility, which is um, having th these properties be represented on chain through the NFTs. And so it gives exposure, it gives um, opportunity to both styles of investors to get involved. So early on, um, just because a lot of DeFi investors, they are very familiar with, you know, Titano, Seifu, Sphere, and this model of, um, of a protocol, uh, we're definitely marketing to to this demographic first uh, because you know they understand it right away and as we grow it really gives us the opportunity to expand into a much wider audience um because before whether you were involved in DeFi and crypto or not uh in real estate investing is, is there's a high barrier to of entry to it it's very hard to get into in, in as far as um how illiquid it is how expensive it is the amount of paperwork required the amount of contacts required and the time it takes to get involved um whereas now you could just connect your metamask to our protocol and be able to purchase uh fractionalized shares of real estate and so that's what really um that's what really gives us an, an edge in marketing because we're going to be able to market to different demographics both trad and DeFi. Gotcha. Yeah. Do you have a plan to get people that aren't into DeFi into the crypto space to actually be able to participate in the ecosystem through something like a fiat on ramp system? Yes, um, that comes down the line. Once again, we want to make sure everything is everything is OK with as far as regulations and legalities, you know, when it comes to um, just holding holding the real estate and the way the method of purchasing is very very key there's a lot of um there's a lot of details uh, of how investors are getting involved and how they're receiving their rewards for us to remain not a security so as for now um the only way is going to be through on chain we're not going to have any direct fiat purchases of our fractionalized shares um once again for sec purposes okay Interesting. I, I ask because I've actually recently been working with a different project that does offer a fiat on ramp for different tokens, and okay. they are capable of just building an app. They have like kind of like this template built out. They just have a different payment processing system that takes in a debit or credit card or different cryptos and then uh, swaps right. it for your token utilizing the decentralized exchange that you're listed on so if you're interested right. if that sounds like something you guys would want to do because it does open the doors for a lot of new people to get into crypto i can forward you their information but i think it is a great way um but yeah like well, you said i don't know yeah, thank you yeah we appreciate that um we always have our ears open so 100 percent. if you could forward me that uh we'll definitely have a deeper look into it but thank you sounds good yeah then uh, moving on, I know you mentioned a little bit earlier you had the ten thousand percent APY, and it would you have a, a set cap on the tokens in the ecosystem. You know, it doesn't go to infinity like other rebasing protocols like Titano, for correct. example. <laughs> yes, um, correct. What are the initial supply of tokens, and then what does it cap at? Right. So the initial supply of tokens is actually 1 million tokens um, and it caps at 100 million tokens. That's the most different there will ever be, um, regardless of how much is burnt, how much is um, like burnt from the beginning or burnt as we go. There will only ever be 100 million different tokens. Gotcha. So over the course of one year, you're predicting is that that's when like all of the defirm tokens will be in circulation? Or is, no, or does that the APY? Still won't, yes, the the DeFi token still won't all be out in circulation, but the APY does drop significantly to two hundred percent, and we plan on having very significant burns um, long before we reach that. Gotcha. Okay, I like it. And then a little, I got a couple more questions before we can move on to more of the real estate questions and ask a couple of the audience questions as well. But um, 
I know you guys mentioned you have a treasury and a war chest. Could you explain what those are and what the differences are between the two? Absolutely, we can. And so our treasury is where we're going. That's another, um, that's one of our primary revenue streams, um, especially early on. And as we continue to um, accumulate within the treasury, um, so our treasury is going to always be invested and in earning a yield at a 75 10 uh, 15 split. So basically, uh, 75% of our treasury is going to, sorry, 75, 15, 10 split. Uh, so 75% of our treasury is always going to be invested into a stable farm, like stable coin yields, earning like um, a very reliable, um, low risk um, yield on the majority of the funds within the treasury. And then 15% into blue chip crypto, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Avalanche, and, and such. And that last 10% into, um, you know, smaller blue, um, sorry, not blue chip, but smaller DeFi projects and protocols um, similar to um, ourselves or just the, the most groundbreaking new DeFi protocols. Um, so that's going to be, we're going to have a treasury board, um, which is actually responsible for vetting just the market and uh, the market trends and the best current investments right now. And we plan on onboarding um, advisors. Uh, we've been, we've We've spoke to Sim a while back briefly, um, so we just really want to get some of the best minds in DeFi uh, to to be on our treasury board because um, we always want our treasury to be earning and to be working for us. And um, so our, that's the that's just for the treasury of uh, the investments, and then we have the war chest. And so the war chest is really what pushes DFIRM operations forward. That's the, um, that is the team wallet that's usually um, active uh, in terms of marketing, uh, buying real estate, um, just building and onboarding new team members and just um, building in that sense. So our war chest is really how we uh, move DFIRM operations forward and our treasury and war chest basically uh, work in conjunction. So based on basically based on um, our current situation. Let's say we needed, um, we're, we're looking at a property and um, we needed um, basically majority of the revenue streams going to the war chest in order to, to uh, buy that new property. Uh, we could be like, let's say we're earning in a passive yield on our treasury. We could be allocating those funds to our war chest um, as well as, you know, um, we have our buy and sell taxes and different revenue streams. Um, as as needed um so that's really the, the main difference with it i hope that um answers it clearly yeah definitely very clear appreciate the detailed response for sure yeah we can move on to some community questions and then uh move on to more of the real estate side of questions as well but yeah, i, I sure. think a lot of the community questions are actually kicking off the the real estate questions Oh, so uh, Buff Tony asks, do you have any homes at the moment that you are already looking at investing in? Um, <clears throat> I can take that one. So right now we don't have any specific homes. Um, we ha we're, we're definitely looking for condos, ideally, just because they work so well for Airbnb. We have um, specific areas that we're looking for and we have specific criteria um, so we have kind of a short list of a bunch of different buildings and then the inventory is kind of, it's always changing. So we're just, sorry, what we're doing right now is just keeping up to date with the inventory as it comes up so that when we are ready to buy, we have, you know, our short list ready and we can move quickly, but, um, we don't have anything that we've moved ahead on yet at this point. It's really just a short list that gets updated as the market changes. Yes, thank you, Lori. And as we know as well, we're kind of in a weird place in the housing market. Um, you know, a lot of are saying, you know, a, a major crash is imminent. And with that, and just like we see in crypto right now, it gives us a, you know, a, a unique opportunity. So um, that's also part of our um, thought process as well as we choose our property. So we're really keeping our ear to the ground in that in that sense. Gotcha. In what areas are you looking at getting a, a property in? I'm assuming that's, that's obviously subject to change, but is there like any couple areas that like really just stick out? Um, yeah. So in Miami specifically, there was kind of three areas that we really liked. Uh, Miami as a whole was appealing because a number of reasons, but um, one of the big reasons is it's so crypto friendly. So it would be a good place to start a uh, crypto real estate. 
And the areas that we kind of targeted are um, Brickle area. That, that one I like because it has a lot of, there's a lot of condos that have been built. So there's a lot of inventory. Um, so it's easy to get, a, or it's easier to get a good deal there and find something that would work well there. It's a good spot to start the portfolio. And then another area that we're targeting is Wynwood. And the reason that one's nice is because they tend to host a lot of the uh, crypto conventions there. And it's kind. there's a lot of uh, crypto-related events and activities there. So we see the potential for that to, as crypto becomes bigger in Miami, that neighborhood to appreciate. And um, right now the prices are below, a little bit below market. So it's a good opportunity for that. And one thing about Miami as well is that there's always um, high traffic regardless of the season. So um, both summer and winter time, Miami is seeing um, usually um, a higher amount of traffic in comparison to um, other cities all year round. So there's uh, more cash flow. Um, as as per mentioned, we're going with short term rentals first, and so uh, cash flow is a big is a big factor in that too. Yeah, definitely. I I like the idea behind condos and short term rentals and high traffic areas. I think that really just makes sense for a real estate strategy. Absolutely. Um, Zoned asks, who will go see the property in person? Absolutely. So for our first properties, um, especially in Miami, our, our very own real estate board is responsible for vetting the properties and doing on on the ground due diligence. Um, we're also, of course, going to be um, working with different agents in the area. We do also have a agent on our real estate board who is from Florida. Um, right when we came out with our server, we put out a, um, a form for job posting and it was very, uh, it got very popular very fast. Um, some very quality uh, real estate board applicants um, went ahead and applied, attached their LinkedIn, was like willing to dox and get on get on calls and everything. And one of the first ones who uh, responded to it, um, he actually said he's in the Florida area, which is where we wanted to start as well. And um, the head of the real estate board, lawyer herself, also will be going down um, to Florida when it's time to purchase our first property and doing that on the floor um, due diligence and, um, the whole process um, actually on the floor. So um, our team is going to be doing the in-person due diligence and purchasing other properties when that time comes. Gotcha. And then do you have criteria specifically for people that want to be on your real estate board to kind of allow them on? Yep, absolutely. Lori, did you want to take this one? Um, yep, sure. So um, our criteria is like the we're looking for obviously the main thing is someone with local knowledge um if they have local knowledge of the market that's extremely helpful because we're looking to expand into you know many many markets and having people on the ground who know and understand the market is helpful um and then another thing really that we look for is just passionate people and kind of what skill sets do you do you bring we don't really want to narrow ourselves by saying we're only looking for these things because one of the things that we found when we put out that initial um, request is we got so many replies from so many people with so many different skill sets. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So it's just kind of like how can, it's just reviewing the skill sets that people bring and seeing how we can make it work to grow D firm together. Gotcha. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. I think that it is pretty awesome that you guys do involve the community in that process and open the doors to local agents in particular where that would have that kind of competitive edge compared to other protocols that maybe would be from the other side of the country that don't utilize their community that would know the ins and outs of that particular market so i think that is a a really good approach for sure exactly thanks a lot and it's because it's a very novel idea too and um and so we, we realized that um, we're going to be working with a lot of different uh, specialists and, and agents from different areas. And so we try not we try to, um, again, keep our ear to the ground and um, find skill sets uh, that really are a good fit for D from finance. Gotcha. Do you have a timeline for the first property, too? 
Yes, um, we want to have our first property. Um, originally, the plan was to have it by launch, um, but we want to have our first property within the first three months of launching and really get our utility and proof of concept um, really uh, out there before before long. Um, right now, we're really, of course, waiting for market conditions to improve before moving forward with our main sale and our launch, um, just because it's, it's just a really tough time for crypto, as we all know right now. Um, so once market sentiment uh, gets better, uh, we plan on having our main raise and um, we plan on, of course, launching and we plan on having our first property either by that time or within three months of. Gotcha. Yeah, definitely. I think waiting out the markets like everybody says you know the, the markets are bad you know it's not a good time to launch projects and you know people oftentimes just go with it but they don't really understand how bad it really is and i've got some interesting data that will kind of hit that point home uh about uh three to four months ago i, w I am a part of a different project and we got our token listed on coin market cap and nice. And we got around 300 holders just overnight, just from you know being on the newly added section on Coin Market Cap yeah. and Coin Gecko, and it was like, you know, that, that was a substantial amount of holders for us. Oh. And then a, a couple of weeks ago, and the markets have only gotten worse since that last couple of weeks too. Right. Um, I was following a different project, and they got listed on Coin Market Cap, and they saw five or six new holders overnight. So yeah. that's like nobody is looking to get into new speculative projects right now. I mean, it's yes. it's ridiculous. Yes, it's because the reality is most investors are down right now, right? Um, that's just the reality of, of what it is. There's a lot of fear in the market right now, and um, it just wouldn't it just wouldn't um, fully make sense. Um, you want to give yourself the best opportunity for success. If the markets were looking great, uh, we'd, we would already be launched right now. Um, but I feel like a lot of protocols rushing to market is ultimately hurting themselves in the long run. And for what we're trying to do, which is bring in, bring in a, novel, um, a novel idea, and the novel concept, um, we we need, of course, you know, the market, the market and the community on our side, um, and just to give ourselves the best op opportunity for success and the health of the chart. So, that's really our our mindset with taking our time. Yeah, it definitely makes sense, and I think that it it's always funny when I see people or different projects that are like, oh no, it doesn't matter about the market conditions that we launch in. We got such a good idea; it doesn't matter. But, <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't work that way. It, it does work. not work that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's I, lots of factors that play in, you know, to financial instruments, right? Like it's it's not that simple. So definitely, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you guys are very cognizant of that. Um, Zyleri, sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, he asked, "Why did you decide to launch on the Avalanche chain?" And then where do you see yourself in two years? And he gives two scenarios. Um, when a bull run starts in 2024 after the Bitcoin halving, or if a bull run starts in October of this year. Like, what do we see happening between those two things? Like if either of those scenarios were to happen, like a bull run starts in October, or okay. it, nothing happens with crypto, like crypto's dead until the next Bitcoin halving in 2024. Yes, if so if so first and foremost um first and foremost we chose Avalanche because uh we believe that there's just a ton of room for growth uh that Avalanche is just um just getting started it's a very user friendly um network and the volume on Avalanche is I, I believe I haven't seen the latest update but I believe it was just in third behind BNB and ETH um just as we were leaving this last, um, sadly, as we were leaving this last bull run. Um, so we just see a ton of growth for Avalanche, just being more and more support. And as uh, regulations start to set in with crypto, Avalanche has been a very popular um, network for institutional investors to get involved in uh, who feel that they've you know, missed out on Ethereum. Um, Avalanche is always one that's really at the core of the conversations and at the core of building. And as well as our dev team um, is very comfortable building on the network and they've been building on Avalanche um, for several years now. And so that was really our thought process behind it. 
And we also plan on um, having a dynamic LP, similar to what we've seen in, I believe MDB is doing it as well. So as the market uh, begins to turn bullish, we can allocate more of our LP into the AVAX DFER LP. And that really gives us an easier time, um, you know, when the market does start going green and Avalanche does start making a run, um, it have, it'll have a positive effect on the DFERM token price. And it also gives an arbitrage opportunity, which also just brings more volume to the DFERM token. So that's um and that's another um another aspect to it. And we believe we're at um we're, we're at like very we're um of course the market is down altogether, but we believe we're at extremely discounted prices as far as the Avalanche network as a whole. So that was our process there. And then, sorry, I usually have these long-winded answers, but then your second question there, uh, if the bull run started in October, again, um, as I mentioned that point earlier, we would allocate more to the uh, AVAX D from LP um, in that case. And let's say we were, um, like we were on the, um, we were, on, we we're in a bear market for the next several years. Um, that, that just gives us a ton of time to build. Um, we definitely would be launched at some point. We wouldn't let the project just sit for multiple years. Um, it would just give us a lot of time to build. And we really, we really appreciate the community, you know, understanding the current market conditions that we're in. And it honestly it just gives the team um, more time and more and more of a reason to build. Like um, when everything is going good and the markets are green, you know, teams teams are still building, but not as hard as they're building um, when the markets are down and and plotting on how we're gonna change things. So that's really how it would look. Um, I believe we'd have a, just an even more refined product in that case. Gotcha, yeah. Definitely interesting to think about hypothetical scenarios like that. Yeah, for sure. It's important to. Yeah, definitely. Um, Zoned asks, um, he says, also on the idea of an anti-dump mechanism being scrapped, while said the governance would be strictly followed, what assurance is there to investors that the core team won't decide that it is best for the project and ignore it? I, I think he's yeah. referring to one of the yeah. announcements that you guys put out. Yep, I remember that, and I believe I remember him also voicing his um his opinion to that back then as well. And that's completely understandable, 100%. Um, at the time um, of, of making that vote, ADM has been out for um, less than a week. The protocol to make it popular was LockPay. And um, they suffered an exploit um, just a few days after mooning um, and the token got wrecked. And another protocol uh, launched shortly after the first fork of it called Lucky7. Um, and all the, our friends, by the way, um, but also um, it just went to display that um, the ADM is really an experimental feature in DeFi. It's very exciting to get in, and the, and the um and like the concept behind it was very exciting. But in practice, it wasn't actually performing um, how everybody thought and hoped it would be. Whereas the rebasing model has been out for longer. Um, we've been building um based on this for far longer and it would be far less of an experiment and for what we're trying to build which is you know a uh basically a, a decentralized real estate syndicate um we wouldn't want a an experimental feature and an experimental product um i believe that you know we could have had a second vote yes and kind of voiced the other side of why you know the adm potentially wasn't so great but we um just made the executive decision um to just go ahead and scrap that because um we see you know both of these protocols which are the first ones to Im implement this exact code um having to change things on the fly uh change the code on the fly take a bunch of votes um the market i mean the chart suffer um in different ways and we're not at all fighting these projects i really love the concept which is why we wanted to implement it for ourselves but again it's a very experimental model um and just something that the devs it just gives basically more of a challenge um, to our devs than, than there needs to be, which, you know, can actually pose more of a threat, I guess, to investors in the long run. So we just wanted everything to go smoothly as far as what we're trying to build. Um, but we understand that uh, with governance votes, and this is a DAO, um, we haven't started our official governance votes, but when we do, um, all votes would be final um, in, in, in like the terms of like something like this. But um, again, the ADM was just an experiment. Um, 
that we really saw as being a potential risk um, long term. So that's really why we went ahead and made that decision. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers your question. In the future, we're going to have uh, real governance, like proper governance, and the votes would be final. But yes. Gotcha. He did say nice answers, by the way. So I, I think I think he did answer very well. And, and your decision, to me, at least makes sense. So I, I appreciate that, uh, you know, a, a team that's willing to adapt to different scenarios that happen and really look at the long-term health of a protocol versus you know even just a yeah, community yeah. vote like if something were you know you put out a vote something that affects the result of that vote got changed but the community wasn't aware of it for example yeah. like what happened to you like it, it does make sense to step in and kind of help guide the protocol in the best direction possible yes yes um basically when everyone voted yes um both both lock pay and lucky seven um looked like they went to the moon um right and um the very next day like you know how fast the narrative the narrative in crypto can change for um like a certain protocol or a certain you know mechanic in DeFi, a certain feature it, it's it's like um you know Things can change fast. And, all it um, takes is one big cell, to be completely honest <laughs> yeah. with you. <laughs> all it takes is one big cell, and just a click of a button. And so uh, we, we were, we did our deep due diligence, and we tried everything we could for that, but it just didn't make sense. Gotcha. All right, we got another question from Benova. He asks, uh, "Will your project go into mortgages? I guess are, are you buying in all cash right now to start?" Yes. Out? Right. To start off, we're going to be buying in all cash. Uh, we don't want to get into mortgages, especially at these ranges, these speculative ranges that we're in right now, um, just to reduce our risk up front. Um, because let's say, you know, the, for some reason, which won't be the case, but for some reason, the revenue wasn't matching up with, you know, um, the amount of leverage we were taking out. It just gives us more, um, more flexibility to own all of our own assets, at, at least early on. Um, before as we scale um, uh, yes as we get more properties under our belt uh, leverage would help us scale a lot faster but um, just to limit our risk early on we're going to be going all in cash gotcha and then are, do you have plans uh, to expand into different countries or continents uh, Benova gives the example of Nigeria because real estate is booming in Nigeria I haven't actually heard of that but oh wow, I believe it nice Yes, 100%. Um, we only plan on starting in North America, but after that, we want to branch out into more countries. Um, yes, we want to look into it anywhere. We don't really want to leave anything off the table. And that's why we're hiring our real estate board um, from wherever wherever they might be in the world. Um, we do a, an in-depth interview and make sure, of course, they're suitable for the position. But the goal of the real estate board is to have a diverse board um, with different knowledge of their local real estate so that we, d we don't leave any stone unturned um, in terms of real estate opportunities across the world. And so um, one place we also want to get into down the line is like Bali, Indonesia, the vacation rentals um, and the vacation culture there is, is really great. And there's always a lot of traffic. And yes, we want to expand um, outside of North America, at least after our first year. Gotcha. I like it. Another question I had was, would you think that it would be possible to expand into almost like a lending platform that uses the assets that you have, the properties that you have bought in cash as collateral to those loans that you give out? Yes, that's a very cool question. I'm glad you brought that in. Um, once again, something for down the line. Um, once we have, once we've kind of scaled up our operation, um, we do want to feature different different features such as le uh, lending. Um, so yes, I'm glad you brought that up. Gotcha. Yeah, because I've I've done quite a bit of thinking on you know different aspects of you know property that's owned by different protocols and how they can really maximize it. And if you don't have a loan out on a property then you're not really leveraging it to the best of your abilities. But yes, at the same exactly. time, you don't have the risk, right? So so there's pros and cons to both. But if you're able to utilize that asset and generate a yield off of it based off of interest. Yes, that... no, 100%. Because there's liquidity that's um, basically being locked up in the home that we could be able to take leverage out against the home and do things with that liquidity. 100% um, something that we've thought of and are going to be incorporating as well. 
Gotcha. Yeah, I like it a lot. Let's see. Um, Sam asks, uh, are you going to become a deflationary currency? Yes, we are. Um, as per mentioned, um, there will only ever be 100 million defirm tokens. And at that time, we will be deflationary. Up along the way, we are going to be doing a lot of buybacks and burns. And um, by the time the 100 million is in circulation, um, a good percentage of it will already be burned. And as per mentioned as well, similar to uh, protocols that, similar to a protocol like let's say Seifu, Seifu's fire pit accumulates a certain amount of tokens uh, from the open market and takes it out of circulation, in turn raising the price of all the tokens um, in, in investors' wallets. We're gonna have the same uh, mechanism as well, except we're not gonna be using a um, a wallet address that we have access to. Originally we were, um, but when we found out that um, a burn wallet can actually support rebases, it's actually going to be sent to a burn wallet. So a, a certain amount of the buy and sell taxes, I believe 5% of all buy and sell taxes actually gets sent to this burn wallet and this burn wallet actually earns a rebase. So that actually cuts out more and more tokens from circulation and it does this in a snowball effect. And so as this burn wallet is growing and cutting um, and cutting down on the um, circulating supply, it in turn um, slowly raises the price um, of all the DFRM tokens on the open market, especially as we head towards having our total supply into circulation. Gotcha. Another thing that I don't think I touched on too much. No, no, I like I like to hear about all the intricate details of different yes. protocols. And that adds another layer of sustainability to our protocol and kind of also supports um, the rebasing as well. Gotcha. Like it. Um, Smitty asks, will the fractional NFTs hold value based on the overall underlying assets in the protocol or will these NFTs be released specifically for each property that is acquired? Per property to begin with. All right. Um, Benova has another question. He asks, uh, will your project be going cross-chain in the future? Yes, yes. I'm glad you asked that. That's actually in our white paper as well. We plan on going cross-chain, especially when we, um, when we talk NFTs, because we want our NFTs to be on the Ethereum blockchain so that they can be traded on OpenSea, which just has a lot more volume than other chains NFT uh, marketplaces. Um, so... Yes, we plan on going cross-chain, especially for this function, but also to bring more users on board. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I definitely think that cross-chain is the future. and It just really allows as many people to get into your protocol and as convenient as possible for everybody that wants to participate. And there's really not a reason to not do it, right? Exactly. And then uh, Smitty has one more question. He asks, uh, what is the advantage of having a, reboss, a rebase model besides hype? A, a reboss? Um, <laughs> to, become, to become a boss. I'm playing. But the rebase token, <laughs> but the rebase token what's the point of having it? Is, um, so basically, oh, sorry, I have the piano on here. So basically, um, the point of having the rebase token, it, it gives, it rewards the early holders of the D firm finance token and the early investors of the DFIRM finance ecosystem. So as before, um, we want to be a mass passive income vehicle um, where our passive income is being backed by real estate, whereas, you know, the the APY of other projects is just based on, you know, you, new users coming in and kind of just the hype and just the community sentiment, whereas the utility is what really um, makes holders um, stick around and as we scale and grow, um, as we scale and grow, basically, uh, and these rebases decrease, um, the, the early holders of the DFRM token has been rewarded. I'm not sure um, if that fully answers your question or if I missed a part of it there. I think that answers it for sure. Um, Benova has another question. He asks, will the building plan be your NFT? I guess like the, a building blueprint or how will the NFTs look like? Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, that was one of the ones that we were that we were thinking of. 
um, basically have different parts of the blueprint be the NFT. Um, another suggestion that we've gotten uh, from the community is to have kind of like um, the artwork or it's, and some people said just straight up photos of it. Um, you'd be able to see each property directly on our website, but in terms of each individual NFT, the design of that is still being considered. Gotcha. Yeah, I think there's a, a lot of different unique things that you could do with yeah, that. Well, because we still want to make it appealing and um, kind of have a little bit of a marketing aspect to it when you see the NFT itself, like on OpenSea. So we are um, we're definitely um, considering different different options for that. Gotcha. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. Um, this is just my opinion. I'm not telling you how to design your NFTs, but if you had like an artist draw the house so it's like not just a direct picture but it's like a cool animated picture you could exactly make different things in the background and make it a little unique but i think it'd be cool for people to see this nft in their wallet and be like i actually own a part of this property and i, exactly. I think i think that'd be really that's cool what we're going for. exactly that's exactly what we're going for yeah actually speaking of owning uh, an nft that represents ownership in a property what's the liability for somebody holding that nft if something were to go wrong yes yeah, so the good thing about it is any nft holder is not liable for anything that happens with the property that's completely um in the responsibility of d from finance the reason for this is that they're not actual registered beneficiaries of the property um they're not holding any legal rights um in the real world to the property they're holding the nft which is just represented on chain and they receive the rewards kind of in a different ecosystem so they don't have to worry about any of the legalities and once again that um goes back to our point on not being a um a security and remaining in the rights of the sec um and therefore investors have no liability when it comes to each of the properties gotcha i think that's a really smart way to do it and it protects the investor side a lot yes yes actually it protects both parties quite a lot um for one, um, and it, it protects the investors because we have our OTC mechanism. So the liquidity for each property is represented on chain already. Um, so investors can easily get in and out of the real estate holdings. And so that's really a big thing that we're bringing to it. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Smitty asks, what methods of marketing will be made to onboard people from fiat? This could propel your projects exponentially. I know I mentioned that I could refer you guys over to the fiat on-ramp guys that I've been working with, but do yeah. you have any more thoughts on that? Yes, absolutely. Um, as long as it falls in line, once again, with the regulations, once we can get into, um, let, let's say we're, we were to have a fiat on ramp, we would definitely be working with real estate influencers um, across, you know, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, which is where just the um, the majority of, of traffic um, really is in terms of, you know, when it comes to marketing, we would definitely be strategic in which influencers we onboard. We may even perhaps uh, bring one onto the team. You know, some of the big names you see on YouTube and even on Instagram in the world of real estate can really uh, market DFIRM to the TradFi community. Um, you, we know, that, of course, there's millions and millions of people who don't even use cryptocurrency who, who are, of course, um, in, um, interested and invested into real estate and would like easier ways to access it like we're going to be providing so um we realize there's a there's a lot of um upside potential once we start branching out to the trad fi space and um once we let's say do something like an, a fiat on ramp making it a lot easier to buy in um yes we do see you know a lot of upside um in that and so we plan on using utilizing influencers at the core of our marketing strategy for that yeah i i think that's a great well thought out plan that you know can yeah. capture the widest audience possible and i think you know the more people you can reach the, the better off you're going to be absolutely and our designer is actually hard at work right now um we're going to be having a lot um a lot of new informational videos uh infographics and just um a, a very easy way to understand d from finance in just um you know a few minutes or a few seconds um through different videos so we're going to be having TikTok campaigns we're going to be having youtube campaigns and we're also going to be um creating our own content to be putting out in marketing as we grow gotcha i like it 
I guess the, the last question I ask before we get into the giveaway, um, three whitelist spots and $50 of tokens. Yes, Super $50 exciting. tokens airdropped at launch. Perfect. Um, the The question is, what are your long-term goals? Or like, what, What's kind of the, the end goal here? Yes, so the end goal. So overall, we want to have, right when you log into, right when you join our server and the Me6 bot greets you, it says um, we're on a mission to accumulate the largest community-governed real estate portfolio in crypto um and so that is that's at the core of our goals but we, we see ourselves branching out into industrial real estate we see ourselves branching out into uh, motels hotels and other forms of, of of real estate that our investors will have a chance to participate in and and be a part of we really plan on creating a legacy whereas um before there'd be such a high barrier to entry in let's say buying a small piece of a hotel or a motel or a vacation property or a, an or an entire portfolio of real estate um this we're we're decreasing the barrier to entry and uh, what we want in the long term is to have an array of real estate investment options for our users um to be able to buy into real estate using the blockchain so that is our long-term goal gotcha yeah i think that it's definitely an awesome goal to shoot for having the, the largest community governed real estate portfolio in crypto that's that's a, that's a big goal the big one and see the thing about crypto is um it's really all about community right um you really only go as far as your community as your community um allows you and so when you look at some of the top projects um even bitcoin um there's always such a strong community behind the project that really rides uh for the project and believes in the project and something like this alone is quite the feat but with the community um and with the power of what you know it's um with what cryptocurrency can do, uh, we believe it's something that can be uh, definitely attained. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess for the giveaway, we usually give them to the best questions asked throughout the AMA. Uh, if you're cool with that, one hundred percent. Either I could pick the questions, or you could pick the questions. Uh, totally up to you if you'd like. Scrolling through here and looking at some of the questions. All right. Um, do you have any any candidates that that you're seeing so far? I can kind of chime in as well. Yeah. Um, we had a lot of people ask a lot of questions. I liked. Um, Benova asked a, a, pr a few pretty good questions. Uh, Zaleri, I, <laughs> I still need to learn how to say that name. <laughs> uh, I like his question with the hypotheticals. Um. Zoned had a couple. He he brought up a good point. Uh, yes, S Smitty had some good questions. Okay. Um. Since you you know what it's your server, I will go ahead and let you choose what you think was the best question, and we'll let them be the winner. Sounds good. Um. Let's go with. I'll, I'll say. I think Benova had the best few questions. I'll say. Benova had the best few questions. Lovely. Yeah. Um. So I, I suppose we'll get, we'll give him the fifty dollars of defirm tokens. So Benova, if you want to DM me your wallet address and I can forward it uh, to uh, Archibald, or if you just want to DM Archibald directly, that that works too. Yep. Or yep. And if you want to, or um, one thing we usually do, if you want to head into our server and open up a ticket, and um, you can just confirm you're the winner, and leave the ticket open, and you can send your wallet address there, um, secure there if you wanted to. Up to you. Uh, either way works. Yeah, I'll drop a link to your guys' Discord for everybody that wants to take a look. Perfect. Thank you. And then um, Zoned, Smitty, and uh, Zaleri, we will give those three the whitelist spots. Beautiful. Welcome to the D firm whitelist. It's good to have you. And you're early. Yeah. Congratulations, guys. I appreciate all the awesome questions. And... I, I seriously appreciate you guys uh, joining in the audience. Um, I know engagement, just overall, whether that's in different servers, just talking in general chat or AMAs, like it has been down lately, just because of how you know poor the markets are. So you guys that are here, 
Um, that, that's true commitment, and I, I seriously appreciate you guys for joining and tuning in and taking some time out of your day to hear what we have to say. So I seriously appreciate you guys. 100%. We all going to make it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, again, <laughs> uh, Archibald and Lori, I appreciate you guys taking your time as well. It was awesome hearing from you guys. Um, you guys did a phenomenal job answering every question that we had. So appreciate you guys as well. It's our pleasure for sure. And um, if you have the recording um, and you wouldn't mind sending it over whenever you have that done, it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, we'd appreciate that too. So we can share with our community. Yeah, definitely. We will get that over to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having us. And congratulations to the winner of the whitelist and the $50 in defrom. Yep. Thank you so much again and have a great rest of your day. Likewise. Take care. Take care.